He's gonna come and try to grab it. So this car, what's special, I forgot to say this, about this car, it's gonna get armored. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. Hey guys, welcome back to another MSO underscore review. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be checking out Jordan's new BMW Alpina XB7. This is the review of the Alpina. The BMW Alpina XB7. XB? XB7, normally they're called X7s. What, what's the B for? Uh, for Alpina. <laughs> no, did the Alpina put the B in there? Yes. Okay, so help me. And I, I, I don't know, I can't help you. Maybe they can, can help us. No, I'm asking for you guys. Oh, you are? Yep. Can you tell anybody that doesn't know what Alpina is? Alpina is, uh, from what I understand, similar to how, like, Brabus. Ah, Brabus. Is to Mercedes. Okay. Where they do some aftermarket stuff. Although this, it's different because this gets sold from new. They have like a tighter relationship, right? Yeah, you know, I don't know too much. You know, most people would actually look this shit up before they have a review, but I'm not looking it up. Uh, this is nice. The GLS 63 is faster than this? Yeah. Well, let's do a, um 80, 80 to zero test. Okay, 80 to zero. Go. Hard. You can't. My whole seat went up. Yeah, so you can drive like that in real life. I don't know for how long on these cars. It's gonna just toast the brakes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like you just won't have any brakes after a few turns. Yeah, how, how heavy is this, Brett? For a vehicle that weighs 5,800 pounds, it still gets zero to 62 in a little over four seconds. So basically it weighs just as much as two Senna's as I find that uh, to be pretty, pretty interesting fact. Boasting 612 horsepower, 590 pound foot of torque. For While I'm standing here, I might as well point out the size of the 23 inch wheels, which are dang near the size of me. You have the Alpina blue calipers, you have the Alpina uh, logo center caps, and you have the Alpina wheels, which are a $2,600 option. Uh, the car is finished in Alpina. Alpina Blue Metallic, not a very fancy name, but up front you have the Alpina badge, which is rather large. You have the Alpina lip kit. Uh, you also have a lot of the chrome accent. Um, you also have this rather large grille, which in this BMW, it fits and suits the size of the car really well. Is this in sport mode? I can't tell what we're in. There's sport right there. It's not lit up. Press it. We weren't even in sport. And look how impressive that was. Okay, look at how annoying it is though. You know how you normally have paddles over here? Yeah. Look at these. They're buttons on top. But look, feel that. Feel that. That's your paddle shifter. I, that, that's Press it. It's a button shifter. Press it. That's stupid. Horrible, right? No, that's gotta be feedback to Alpina. That's pretty good. We're, we're pulling some RPMs there. I was expecting you to say G's. <laughs> I, pulling some G's, but it turned into, we're pulling some serious RPMs. Our serious RPMs here. Another interesting fact that Bryce pointed out the other day when we were at the drag strip, it has a cover basically inside the front grill that protects the radiator. As soon as the car turns on, these slats open up to allow the airflow, which is really nice. So to finish up the front of the car, uh, you know, it has the larger grille, which is rather controversial right now on the M3 and the M4. But as far as a large family SUV, it suits the car really well. You also have the Alpina spoiler. You also have the Alpina quad exhaust <clears throat> and the rear diffuser. Other than that, the exterior is pretty similar to the X7. Let's hop in, check out the interior. Oh, I love it. Why do I love braking like that? Ever since we went on the track, it's like, I love it. I love doing it like unsuspectingly though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> look at my seat's going up. Yeah. Look at the seat goes up automatically when you brake really hard. That's okay. gotta be some kind of protection. <laughs> we just found good We feet. found safety features. I, no, okay, let me get it back. You let, let it rest Yeah, like there. go back. Okay, I want you to see this. Cause I thought I was hitting the button at first. But the buttons are way down here. There's no way I'm touching it. Okay, right. It's got to be getting you ready for like the airbags to go off if you're yeah. in an accident. But yeah, but it's so slow. <laughs> well, I guess though, if you're about to get in one. Okay, ready? But it feels you have braking. Ready? Yep. Look okay, at it. Do you does. see that? It gets you in position for the airbag. I love that. I also want to say thank you to Daniel for finding this car from this dealership. I love that dealership. Yeah, me too. This world is 
Hopping into the interior of the XB7, first thing I notice is how comfortable the interior of the XB7 is. It reminds me of the Maybach, which is definitely a good thing when you're looking at a luxury SUV. The nice thing about the Alpina XB7 is that it's more sport focused than the Maybach, so um, it, it's kind of a blend of the best of both worlds with the interior here. So first thing I wanna talk about is the materials used and the way they blend everything together. Um, you have the suede A-pillars that kind of continue into the roof line. You have the leather seats that are very, very plush, but also it has the Alpina crystal shift knob, the traditional Alpina labeled tracker. Um, but other than that, it's a excellent, excellent layout of an interior as far as the quality of materials. Steering wheel's extra thick, um, which I believe is an Alpina thing. The Alpina steering wheel with the blue stitching and the green stitching, Alpina badge in the center, also on the tracker and also in the inlay of the lacquer on the wood grain. Ooh, that's a cool crystal shifter. Yeah, they partnered with Swarovski for that. Ooh, I love that. Yep. You know, it's got an X in there. You wanna know what that's for? Um, the XB7? Absolutely. Oh God. Try to hit him and see if it stops it for us automatically. <laughs> get him, get him. Oh shit, you almost got him actually. <laughs> could've got him if you wanted to, you had a brain. I for sure could've. And just so you know, like no animals were harmed in the, um, filming of this video? In my interior opinion, what I like my interiors to be is the less is more concept. And when you first hop in this, it's very, very overwhelming. Uh, first, I'll talk about kind of everything that's going on with the console. You have your general push button start, but then above you have your traction control, your cameras, your hazards, you have your sport mode, your comfort mode, your adaptive cruise control, your auto handling, your park brake, the downhill speedometer control, the list goes on and on. So again, when I say less is more, it can be very overwhelming while you're trying to drive down the road, cruising on the Autobahn, whatever it is, or whatever country you're in, to look down and kind of get distracted with everything that's going on here. Um, but again, I'm sure once you get used to it, it's a breeze to navigate through. You also have your ride height control, which is a very interesting control module with a push of a button. The car fluctuates up and down. We'll get into that as we do the drive. Uh, you also have your media controls up top. So if I hit media, it'll change to the media screen here. And then I can navigate through using the tracker or my hand. Uh, we'll jump over to the steering wheel. I love the display on the XB7. Um, this is something that I find really, really driver intuitive. It's very, uh, the feedback's phenomenal. It also has a camera that watches me and it'll, it'll detect if I take my eyes off the road where the car will basically drive itself, which is a really nice feature. Don't ever take your eyes off the road though. Uh, but the buttons again kind of continue onto the steering wheel. On the left side alone, I have six or seven buttons uh, controlling the, the cruise control, um, your adaptive cruise control, how, how close you want to be to the car in front of you and behind. Now jump up to the dash, you have all your uh, climate control buttons, which I like buttons to control my climate more so than a touch screen. If I'm driving, I just want to quick click. I don't want to navigate out of CarPlay and whatnot to find my climate control. So I do really enjoy the buttons directly underneath the air vents. Jump up to the screen. Overall, the screen's fairly easy to navigate. Uh, some of the cool features on the touchscreen, if you go into car, go to settings, you can change your interior lighting. There's about 20 different colors that you can select and choose through. One thing that I really like that this has is the wireless Bluetooth. So you don't have to plug your phone in to be on CarPlay. It does have a wireless iPhone or Android charger down here below. It also has the USB-C ports inside the armrest. One thing that I find really interesting, it has the M Sport lap timer. Uh, I don't know how often we're gonna be throwing this around a racetrack but I think it'd be really cool to throw this around the track against the GL63 or the GLS63 Rentec, um, maybe even the Maybach. I think that would be pretty fun. So overall, it has every feature you could ever want. So once you get used to it, um, I'm sure it's, it's a phenomenal layout and it works really, really well for a driver and it could be very driver friendly. Uh, but I think the really important part of the Alpina XB7 is in the back. So let's hop in the back and take a look. Well, that was a nice review. I don't know what we actually reviewed, the brakes and the safety, I guess. Well, yeah, and how it's fast, right? It is spacious in here. It is a seven seater. So I got this car for Chicago. Very spacious. I gave it a 10 out of 10 on space. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 on performance. 
I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 on looks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 on braking. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 on safety features. Okay, well, when we get back, we'll do the math and we'll tell you what that average is out to. See what it averages out to? <laughs> In all seriousness, I do like the little touches of their Alpina logo all over the place. And I do love how just like, instead of the BMW completely, it's just Alpina badges. Right. Like, and you're and right, right. Not, that's more the bravest type look. Yeah. It's not just like a little upgrade. It's like, we took this car, we made it our own, and we tuned it. Yep. So, you know, the infotainment isn't the greatest, but I would I would still give it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Great, now you ruined it. Now we really don't know what that composite score is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we've hopped into the back of the XB7, and the first thing that I noticed is how comfortable and roomy it is back here for someone my size. I mean, I'm 5'6", so I'm not the largest and tallest as Jordan and Jason, but uh, I have the seat all the way back. As you can see, I got my legs up. But overall, it's very, very comfortable back here. The ambient lighting continues on into the back with the wood grain. Uh, you have USB-C chargers kind of placed throughout the back seat. Another feature I like is the ceiling sky lounge that features 15,000 LEDs. Uh, this option vehicle has the captain seats, which is one of like the five or six options that we have on this car, is the captain seats that are fully adjustable, you know, front, back, but you can also lay them back on my nice little pillow here. I'm gonna take a quick nap afterwards. It's uh, very luxurious in the back. So yeah, let's hop in the third row and go over the probably the fanciest um, third row seating of any uh, luxury SUV on the market right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, whoo, whoo. Get a little snug back here. For a third row and to have your own temperature control, that's a really, really nice feature, especially in a vehicle this size. The cabin temperature can be much different in the front, in the middle, and in the rear. Uh, you got a cup holder. I believe we got USB-C chargers back here as well, which is nice. You have your own vent. I can control my own sunroof in the back here. But as far as if you're gonna take six people in here, you better hope it's a small child or someone smaller than me and it's a short road trip because just as many other uh, mid, I, I'd consider this a mid-size luxury SUV, there's just not a ton of room. Just random Triple F shirts. Triple F merch, we got new merch coming. In, uh, Did you see Gobi? Yes, that was pretty sweet. I thought it was cute. I thought it was. It, it needs some additional touches. No, it was just like a teaser. Yeah. So if we happen to see anybody that um, recognize us, just come up and ask for your Triple F merch. Say, give me my merch and we'll hand you one of these. Yeah, and if we don't have it, then we won't give you the merch. We'll, we'll look at you like you're really weird and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh, if you want to go jogging and you have tiny feet, this is great. It's Brett, Brett. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, I take that back. Hey, let's, let's redo that. Okay. So this car, what's special, I forgot to say this, about this car, it's going to get armored. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. So we're gonna armor the panels, the glass, everything's gonna be armored. So it's gonna be able to withstand point blank AK-47. So if somebody comes up and carjacks you, like they're like this, do you, do you give them the finger? So panels are, but we're also gonna get electrified door handles. So then when they go to, he's gonna come and try to grab it. So, because this is going to Chicago, it's getting armored. Okay, the murder capital of the world. Yeah, of the United States. Okay, okay. let's calm down. <laughs>